Stu made the call. But it's your name on the phone bill. He said he'd pay me back. You've spoken to him. Oh, he said the breakups are really tough on him, so he's... And more right. importantly, tough on you. Why don't you invite Chloe round for dinner? Girls' night. She's busy with her new boyfriend. Gemma, then. Well, she won't talk to me since I did her route. You will make new friends here, sweetheart, I promise. Maybe even meet a decent guy. Not that a boyfriend is the answer to everything. The right one is. You need a hand there? Uh, ACC form, please. Of course you can stay with us. You can have Tanza's room, it's better than your old one. Oh, I don't want to jinx it. Not until I've had confirmation from Rachel. You said yourself the interview was a dream. It was. That didn't take long. Yes, my interview wasn't so short after all. We don't need to rub it in. What went wrong? <laughs> Rachel had clearly made up her mind before I'd even opened my mouth. The interview was pointless. So congratulations. Tell JJ Auntie Libby is moving back home. <laughs> Auntie Libby is a job-stealing sneak. How ungracious. I blaze a trail for you to follow, and this is the thanks I get. All right, the tensions are a bit high. You could have had your pick of dream jobs the world over. Why this one? Calm down, you two. Well, it's because you couldn't stand the thought of me doing better than you, that's why. I always knew you'd be a sore loser. Enough, the both of you, before you say something that will ruin your friendship forever. Plenty more blondes in the ocean, anyway. I like Brooke. You should throw her back before she bites you. At least she doesn't have to raid Joan Collins' shoulder pad collection to prove that she gets <laughs> anything. <laughs> You up for a fun night? Hell yes, we could go to Q Road. Maybe somewhere a bit fancier? Yeah, I could do pets. Just. Uh, where are we going? Well, that's up to you and Bella. Bella? You know, the new chick on the front desk at the hospital. She's cute. What? Are you offloading me? I am hooking you up. It's time Grumpy Dwarf got himself a piece of Snow White. Hey, I'm not grumpy. Yes, you are. Even one of the customers asked if you're OK. Whatever. I'm lining you up with a total sweetheart and you're not even curious. What? Only because I don't want to wake up in the boot of her car. Too soon. Stuff, Penny. I think you should go. You need me here. No, I don't. <sighs> and the thought of me dating somebody else doesn't drive you insane with jealousy? Uh-huh. <sighs> OK. Blind date it is. Yay. The thoracic insufficiency syndrome case. The Richardson boy. Sit in if you like. Sure, what time? Kicks off at four. Uh, I have a meeting. A meeting is more important than me? It's about the private wing. I have a few more ideas I need to pitch. Oh, you mean those pet ideas you just came up with as an obvious excuse to hang with Rachel? It's not an excuse. Oh, man, she's got you good. Our relationship is purely professional, and that's how it will remain. Says who? Rachel? The woman that lit up like a Christmas tree when you praised her work. What do you mean, lit up? Thank you, Chris. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. She's a careerist. It's all about the work with her, nothing more. Mm, you say so. OK, to prove my professionalism, I will attend your surgery. She just postponed your meeting, didn't she? <laughs> Nice. Just nice. Well, I don't think she's up for anything, you know, committed. You probably didn't know that about me. What? I miss the commitment. You know, when I'm in, I'm in. Okay, you're weird. Those are on the house. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Yes, I do. And it's for a good cause. And she's looking at you. <laughs> you haven't said what you thought of the movie. It sucked. Big time. I am so relieved you think so. What was up with those two? Who with all that smudged eyeliner and him all pouty with his toothpick legs? Mm. Ooh, you could tell they hated kissing each other. It was like they were eating with their mouths pressed together. Oi, focus please. Ow! Sorry, I didn't mean to make uh, contact. You just flicked me. I said sorry, didn't I? But you're making me feel really boring. Do I have a big red dot between my eyes? Because I'm pretty sure that it's only the females that actually have the dots. 
They're called bindies, dum dum. Right, fine. Well, I get one free bindi shot then. No hold way. Still. I, I said hold still. Heard from Rachel yet? No. You? No. She said end of the day. Why do you think she's taken so long? You're going to get the job. You really think so? I always thought so. Oh, I've been such a cow. Oh, I've been a whole herd of cows. Oh, I missed you so much. Oh, tell me about it. It's like there's been this giant Libby-shaped hole in my universe and no one will ever fill it, no matter how blonde they are. Libby, would you mind coming with me to my office? See? Only if Gerald can come too. I don't think that will be appropriate. Well, he's my final support in his hospital protocol, so okay. if you... Gerald can come. We do appreciate your loyalty. It's what made your bid so competitive. Libby's decision to leave Shorten Street, despite us paying for her MBA, did ruffle some feathers. But she has returned with a job experience she could never have got here. Anyway, you don't quite have the skill set we're looking for, so I'm sorry. We can't offer you the job. Congratulations, boss. Oh, you're only as good as the PA under your wings. Libby, your candidacy was a little bit harder to decide on, which is why I originally wanted to speak to you alone. Mm. Although you were a standout candidate... Although? While you have experience setting up private sector systems, you don't have any experience running a private hospital. So I'm sorry. You didn't get the job either. And who did? His name's Leo. Leo Hofstetter. He's flying in as we speak. 